Hello, it is Jason Train, and welcome back to Urania Gardens, our Planet Coaster Realistic theme park. Today we build some bus loops and some other fun little things. Let's get right into the time lapse. Alright, so you'll see here that I already did a lot of the outline work in the pavement, because that was just kind of boring to watch, so I cut that out of the video. So first we're working on these uh, little bullard things, I think that's what they're called. Uh, you'll see that a lot of bus stops have something like this just to kind of stop the bus, give the bus driver it's like a stop sign in my opinion, I, I don't know the exact purpose of them, but they, they fit the part. I also used a little uh, street lamps, not street lamps, path lamps to make them illuminate at night and still kind of look cool. So I was messing with colors a little bit, but we're going to leave it red because the rest of the building and everything that we build later are going to be blue and purple. Um, and the reason why it stays red, a very not fitting color, is because it is a not fitting color. We want it to stand out. So the bus drivers see the little red things. So next we're on to the building, and this is me pulling up some inspiration pictures of what we're actually about to build. So it's a little, I guess, shelter for the peeps uh, when they're waiting for their bus to come, because there won't always be a bus here going to their location. We only build three of these because uh, I didn't feel like doing any more than that, to be completely honest. Three is enough. And it's taking up a lot of real estate that we need for backstage. Because uh, that ride over there in that background is getting a decently large coaster building. Because it's an entirely indoor coaster. And I haven't built yet. We're going to build it eventually one day. Uh, I'm still kind of messing with the idea in my head. So these columns pose a little bit of a challenge to me in terms of all the pieces I would find were either way too big or way too ornate. So we ended up taking the, one of the ornate pieces and just rotating it so the flat side was the only side that showed and that looks perfectly fine. I end up using these columns here because they have the little trim, but they just don't match well with those columns. So we delete them, replace them with those columns, and provide a little trim of a dark, darker blue, which really we only use every once in a while just to accent something. So we go in to do those and realize nothing's lined up properly, so I delete the entire column and line it to the grid this time. Which I should have done the first time, but I didn't, sadly. So, we'll go ahead and put that back into place in just a moment now, there we go. And again, copy and paste it to match that shape, and rotate it to align to the grip, to the pathing that we have. I guess those aren't paths, those are pavement, whatever. And just, I'm pulling a lot of ideas from reference image here, so we have a little overhangs, we have a thinner crossbeam there. Which actually it looks a little gross, but it works. I mean, it does work. Uh, and we add a upper pillar here. So these upper pillars pose a little bit of a problem to me in terms of their height, because they were way too tall. You see there, they're a little too tall, so I lower them down, and I just I found a way to hide them. I did manage, but they stick down a little bit from that trim line there. It's not a trim. I don't know what it's called. I, I knew what it's called, but I don't remember what it is now. It just it hangs a little down, but we use that for lights later on, so it's fine. And just a matter of copying and pasting the roof across the building now. And yet again, we do another custom roof. Part of the reason why we do a custom roof on this building is just because the width of the building is too thin to allow for a normal in-game roof. So we just end up making one out of spooky planks, and we get our count pretty low on this one. I, I think the building itself is only like 200 pieces, so I, I don't know. I'm just guessing. But it, it's a decently small building part count compared to a lot of the buildings we've done in this park so far. We're gonna end up lagging our computer so bad by the time we get into the park, really. And, and the roof does its job, but it keeps the sun and the... not the people, the <laughs> rain away. Uh, I don't know what was happening there. I guess I'm just cleaning up the columns because there's a lot of them just to copy and paste things evenly. So we're going to add our fencing so we can actually have a queue line here. So no one actually uses the queue line because that would be a pain to try to figure out. And I wasn't up for making people try to slither through the queue line. But we make it look like what a queue line would look like. We add the little, not rubber band, a pull tape, yeah that thing, barrier. And we make it a purple, just to, again, have a different color in there that we use somewhere else. And then you realize, and I'm sure you'll see it there, I did that entirely wrong, so I go in and fix it. Yeah. Uh, and it looks right now. We have the entrance, and 
I think now we start on our sign. So the sign posed a big challenge to me in terms of how would I make this look like a sign for one of these. Also we added one of those that's kind of like a display board. This bus is going to this place at this time and it shows, you know, if you go to a train station they have those sorts of boards. It's a similar concept. So a lot of, some bus stations have it too. Uh, sometimes it's just a schedule map. But this will be digital. So I looked at using uh, some of the base game circles and I just ended up making my own oval. And again, I try using the base game signs. Some of them look okay. This one looked okay, but it just doesn't look right. And I just wasn't happy with it. It was just too much white space. So I'm trying to fill up the white space. But I just couldn't do it. I tried so many different things to try to do it. Either the signs overflow or just doesn't look right. And I spent a while on this. Way longer than I should. So I ended up pulling up a Masked Bandits custom font, which has deco font. And I rather like how it looks on here. Uh, it looks simple, but it looks nice. I might actually use it somewhere else. Although, the one thing he doesn't have in it is numbers, so I'm sorry, I did edit your font. I hope you're okay with that. Uh, I made a 1, 2, and 3. I can make the rest of the numbers if you want. The 2 isn't the best, but it does its job. I don't know if it's in scale of the other things either. <laughs> it's just me trying to make a 2. Because the 2 was hard, and the 2 took me probably a good 10 minutes at least. And I also realized that after copy and pasting those buildings that I need to rotate that sign there and add it on the side because if you're coming in from the front you're not going to see the front sign, you're going to see a side of the building. So I ended up adding a side sign. And we go in and add some lighting. Uh, these look simple. I love the spooky on a house lamps. They, they fit so well in just this era of building. So. I, I use them more or less everywhere. <laughs> they're, they're in a lot of places in this park as it is. But I did try to make these look different by giving them... <laughs> this looks like a hat. I, I deleted that, yeah. And I used something more like this. Uh, and it looks much more the part that I'm going for. And you'll see in the reference picture later that it does look similar to it. Although yours is much more skinny going out. It looks like a cone. Not a cone. A uh, funnel. It looks like an upside down funnel. Which I could not achieve with dark chips. Not unless I want to put in hours of work into a single lamp, which I was not in the mood to do. Yeah, that's how it looks at night, which is, it looks quite nice. Although the one thing I did miss on doing, I don't know if I showed it in the video, I did do it in the end, is add light to those signs, because those are important to see which gate it is. So, I go ahead and do that. Oh, and this is me beginning the two. The two took me so long, and I actually... There's a point in the video where it just kind of pauses. That's me pulling up reference images to look up what a 2 looks like. And I was sitting in a Discord call while doing this and just being really confused about 2s and the people I was with were just not understanding my struggle. Who would think you would struggle so much with a 2? So I think this is almost the winning 2 here. It, it just took so long to get this 2. And it looks a little squished right here, but it's fine. I center it and it looks okay. Yeah, and we copied it around. What's this? What am I doing? <laughs> I had no clue what was happening there. Okay. Well, we copy and paste them around, and they, they fit apart. So now we start on the three. No, this is still inserting a two. <laughs> Create a commentary right here. So what we did try is we tried adding a little oval behind it, but I just could not make it in a way I liked, and we'll end up bother copying and pasting to every single one. So now we, I think we start on the three. Yeah. So we use that same two shape to make a three. And you see this looks a little off. It, it does look a little off. It's a little small. So I end up just deleting it and I make it larger by just kind of adding more down pieces. <clears throat> Sorry. And this actually fits much better, but again, it looks a little off. It looks upside down here. So I end up just shrinking it down a little. It looks much closer. That looks more like a three now. So we go through and delete all the twos and have more threes and then we're good to go. We have our little booths here. Not booths. Sheds, shacks, I don't know what to call them. But they serve their purpose and they look nice. I'm happy with them. I ended up moving them out a little bit to add more depth to all the numbers. Also made it easier to cover with these sobels in the back. Because these also just I inserted to 
make it look a little nicer, add a little more detail. Although it doesn't illuminate, so it probably wouldn't be that thick anyways. If we're to illuminate, it would make sense to have the whole back section in mind. It kind of doesn't now that I'm thinking about it, but it looks fine, it looks good. I have no clue what's happening now. Oh, I'm going through and copying and pasting those billboards. So, I come in and fill in this path here. Oops, actually that should have been off. Uh, but, I go in and just copy and paste that path around, just to fill in that space. I'm never really happy with that. Also, let me know in the comments if you're having the same problem too, where the pavements disappear. Because I'm on the highest graphic settings and they still disappear. I also know why I'm on the highest graphic settings, that should be turned down a little bit. But, they still disappear for me and I, I was talking to SP Ridley and he said he wasn't having a problem with that. So I'm a little confused. <laughs> I, I really don't know what's happening with the pavements and disappearing. Uh, also, I fill in those little potholes, I'm sure you noticed them earlier. And just a little happy shot of the work I've done. So now it's time for the bus. We have one bus in the center bus station. And we could add more later. I don't know, we might. Might not. We'll see. Depends on how many buses we want to have in this area. And we end up tilting the bus and deflating a pop tire, because what you'll see in a lot of buses is they tilt to allow for easier access into the bus. So. I built a tilting bus, and I'm quite happy with how the tilt works. I also was trying to make the colors just look so kind of odd. They match the colors of the park, yes, but they, they look slightly odd, and I like them. So we go with this whole Urania transport thing, which I think I might add to our tow truck in a smaller font, because that would also be a Urania transport vehicle. Because I assume this is kind of like how Disney owns a city. It, and the same sort of concept here. So we have our own transport network, all that sort of stuff, road network, whatever. So I end up redoing the bus, and you'll see here I used tires to make it look like the tire deflated a little. Because that's how the tires work, they deflate. Alright, so now on to today's inspiration. First is the bus stops from Disney's Springs, Disney Springs of Walt Disney World. Uh, just, again, it's pretty close to the same structure, and you'll see that. And I like how they came out. Next is the bank from the north, it's in the north of Scotland, I don't remember what city. And it's kind of odd that I'm using a bank from the north of Scotland for a US based park, but it fit the exact image I was going for. Of This definitely looks like a bank. Welcome to the overview portion of our video, I'd like to take this moment, I'm about to let you guys know about the Discord, my Discord, in the description down below. I share all those inspiration pictures that you saw before, as well as other inspiration pictures that don't make it into the video, so links down below, go ahead and check it out. So in the park you can see from this kind of overview look of the entrance, things have slightly changed. We have a beginning to the right side of the main street now, as well as we have the bus station on the left that you guys just saw. We're going to head to the bus station first. So it doesn't, hasn't changed much since you guys saw it in the video. Uh, these signs now light up at night. But also one of my favorite parts about it is this. So I'm not going to turn on peeps, but people now spawn from inside this bus. So it's just basically from having an entrance down below it. And they walk out that door and it looks really cool. But yeah, that's the big change that was over here. So now if we go to the park entrance, we're just going to go ahead and enter through. Not much has changed in terms of the parking lot. I didn't do much there. I don't think at least. Uh, did I do anything? No, I didn't. I don't think so, at least. Uh, going through the entrance, I don't know if I, I don't know if I showed this off yet or not, but I did these little signs. I know I spoke about doing them a few episodes ago, but they are done. Uh, probably two episodes ago. I don't know if I showed them or not. Also, that sign is off, and it should be off. But that's a different story. So we walk in through the entrance. You'll see the Emporium is now on the right. Because I figured... These are the theme of the ride. This should be a bank. It's now a bank. I built a bank. The bank looks nice. I'm quite happy with it. I also started another building down here. It's not done yet. It's not done. I'm not entirely sold on it yet either. But yeah, so that North of Scotland bank inspired me on this building. You can see it 
it's slightly different. I took inspiration from other pictures as well. There's a bank in, I think, South Wales that I used some inspiration from, as well as some concept art for various banks as well. And they all kind of just took place in this bank here. I, I do like that bank from the north of Scotland, and this main structure kind of resembles that. But I went a little bit different with the colors. Played with blues and yellows. And I tried to tie in the colors between these two buildings, and these buildings tie their colors together. So I'm trying to keep colors connected to the rest of my building. One thing I really like about this building here, I built a roof access up here that you can't notice from ground level. So if you're at peak level, you wouldn't know there's access to this roof because the door is perfectly the same color, for one thing, but it's also low enough where you don't see it. Also, I did that here. It's not as ornate of a column as this would be because people can't see it. So I put some thought into that because the park would not spend the money on a place people can't see. It just doesn't make sense. So they have the structural support they need, but it's not over the top. And they did the same thing here with the detailing, because you only see a little bit of it. So they wanted to detail it, but not so much. So they did a little bit. It's not perfect. You can see that was just me copying and pasting. Also, the concrete kind of shows through, but we won't talk about that. And just a ladder and a little power box. And there's a light in there as well that's very dim, but bright enough where you can see, which I found was important. Another thing, I removed this building. It doesn't fit the theme that well. It's also a part hog. It's something like 3,000 pieces, yeah. And what's going to be here instead? A police station. So I found a police station online. I don't remember what town it's from. It says on the police station. I just don't have the image of it right here. But it's very brick, and I'm not 100% sold on that. I don't know if that will fit, so I'm going to finish it and then see how it looks, because we do have a brick building here. Promise it's the same brick. Actually, it might not be. I don't know. But we'll we'll see how this turns out. And depending on how it turns out, we'll keep it or remove it. So that's basically all for this overview video. Nothing else has really changed. I didn't have too much time. I'm moving. Um, I'm moving as of recording this. I've packed up half my setup, but I wanted to get the video out on Wednesday. So I have everything else kind of just in boxes. I'll be moved in Thursday. Uh, but yeah, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to subscribe, like, uh, let me know what you guys thought in the comments, because I do want to hear you guys' opinion. Thanks for watching.